All right, good morning class. Let's continue our lesson on the particle nature of matter. Today we are moving on to 7.3. Let's do a quick recap. Changes in state can be brought about by either heat gain. So heat gain means heat is absorbed by the substance or heat loss. The substance is cooled down and this process is reversible. All right, so let's proceed on to the next three processes that we got to learn. Okay, so let's look at melting first. Now for part A, right, the melting process means the substance at the solid state gets converted to the liquid state. And we can see that this is represented by a solid line. If you look at the legend, it means to say this solid line here, the particles in a solid gain heat. All right, and moving on for boiling, it's part B over here, which means to say the liquid state substance in liquid state changes state and becomes the gaseous state that's what happens during boiling and evaporation now there is a difference however for boiling it can only take place at the boiling point for example for water the boiling point is 100 degrees celsius so boiling can only take place at 100 degrees celsius and not at any other temperature now moving on to part c we can see deposition now for deposition Essentially, a substance in a gaseous state gets converted to a solid state. Now, pay attention to the dotted line here. In this case, instead of gaining heat, the substance is losing heat. So the gaseous substance loses heat and then becomes a solid. Now, for deposition, it's a bit unusual because the substance in the gaseous state changes to the solid state directly. It does not become a liquid. Okay. Now moving on next part D, we see sublimation. Now for sublimation, substance in a solid state becomes a gas without being a liquid. It changes from solid state to gaseous state directly. Now let's watch a video on sublimation. Okay, moving on, we let's look at the sublimation of iodine. So sublimation essentially means iodine in the solid state becomes the gaseous state. All right, so the um, solid iodine essentially becomes a gaseous state. You can see that there's the purple gaseous iodine being formed. That is your iodine vapor. Okay, so from here, sublimation happens directly. It does not become a liquid. It changes from solid to gas directly. Now, the brown bottom flask containing the ice, the surface of this round bottom flask is cool. So what's ha what happens is the iodine vapor will touch the cool surface of the round bottom flask and it becomes a solid. And here, you see a conversion from gas to solid directly without going through the liquid state. And what you have now are very beautiful iodine crystals. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. So coming back, you can see that what you have seen will be sublimation. We have seen the process of deposition. And next, let's look at condensation. Condensation is essentially part E. That is the change in state from gas to liquid. And part F, freezing, so solidification, is a change in state from liquid to solid. 
and I, but I think you are quite familiar with freezing. All right, let's move on. So please turn to page 17 of your notes, the concept map. We're going to focus at the bottom, this portion here. So um, when a substance gain heat or lose heat, melting, boiling, freezing, condensation can take place. These will bring about changes in state. All right, please take this down and fill in the blanks in your notes. Okay, you can pause the video anytime you want. Once you are done, let's move on. Okay, so let's move on to the first MCQ question. All right, let's look at this. Huh? They are looking for movement of particle decrease. That is actually the key point. Now, if you look at the speed of movement of the particles, you will notice that moving from solid to gas, um, here, for solid particles, they can only vibrate about fixed position, but for gas particles, they are moving very quickly in all directions. So your speed of particle movement actually increases. This way, decreases. All right. So let's look for speed of particles decrease. We are looking for liquid becoming gas. No. Solid to gas? No. Solid to liquid? No. The only one in correct direction is but B. Alright, so that is your answer. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay, so they are asking you which process do particles start to arrange themselves in regular pattern? The key point here is regular pattern. Straight away you should zoom into solid because solid particles are arranged in regular pattern. But for gas particles and liquid particles, they are arranged in an irregular pattern. So the only answer we can have will be A, because the liquid particles will start to arrange themselves and become more and more regular, eventually becoming a solid. All right. Now let's move on next. All right. So over here, let's watch a short video. All right. This is a installation setup. Now inside the round bottom glass, you have your liquid, it's boiling, you can see some paper. Okay, now as a liquid boils, we get more and more paper in the round bottom glass. Okay, the paper will touch the bulk of the thermometer. You can see that the temperature is pretty close to 100. Okay, so what happens is that the paper will enter the condenser, eventually condense and become a liquid. Okay, so here they are asking you which of the following correctly represents the arrangement of particles in X and Y. Now to answer this question, we need to first figure out what is the state of the substance at x and the state at y. Okay, so at x, you will know that the vapor will rise and eventually enter the condenser, right? Okay, but for y, it is the liquid here is boiling, you will see two states, gaseous state and a liquid state. So let's figure out x first. We are looking for the gaseous state, which of the diagrams represents a gas, and D should be the answer. This is the only one that represents a gas. All right, so and you can see that on the right hand side, there is a mixture of liquid and gaseous state. D is the answer. All right, so let's move on. Now, for the structure question, let's look at the name of the processes. But before that, let's figure out. Now, this is a solid. Okay, now this is a liquid. And this is a gas. So from the diagram, we can we are able to tell because the liquid state particles are closely packed but irregularly arranged. Gaseous state particles are far apart, randomly arranged. Okay, but before we continue, I'm going to give you some time. Please pause the video, fill in the name of the processors for the processors A to E, and then we will work on the examples together. All right. Okay, so let's check your answer. Okay, I hope you have referred to your notes and you have gotten them correct. Let's look at the examples. From solid to liquid, we have 
ice that's melting liquid to solid water freezing to ice liquid to gas boiling gas to liquid water vapor to water solid to gas remember the video dry ice okay dry ice becomes a gas directly and the gas we get is actually carbon dioxide gas okay please pause the video if you need to okay so you can take down the answers now let's move on okay so the first structure question they want us to name the process that the substance has undergone so let's figure out now this is a gas and over here this is a liquid so from gas to liquid the name of the process definitely has to be condensation okay now for the description they want the changes when they want changes we are looking for before and after that is what we're looking for and you can see there are two marks here right which means to say the first mark is given for arrangement second one is given for movement okay so let's answer arrangement first then moving on to movement okay so gaseous state liquid state arrangement you will see that at the start is a gas gaseous state their particles are far apart irregular and then finally to the liquid state okay the particles are closely packed irregularly arranged so we have a before that's a gas and after that is a liquid now moving on next let's look at the movement okay you can see that for the gas particles this is your gas particles description the particles move freely randomly at high speeds these are the three main key points we want to see to describe gas now for liquids okay more freely randomly and sliding sliding is the keyword that we're looking for pass by another so as you can see the answer the way to answer such a question the first one here is arrangement okay and we answer focusing on the before in red the after in blue the second portion is the movement before in red after in blue all right so be very careful when you see the word changes we are looking for before and after all right pause the video if you need to once you are done you can continue and then we'll move on all right so let's move on to the next structure question now what happens in exam if you're asked to explain what happens during the process of melting and then boiling now bear in mind when you answer the question you need to refer to particulate model of matter that means you need to explain with reference to particles okay um please be very careful there are many technical terms you need to use there are many keywords you need to have for such a question and the keywords you are looking for are the ones that are blanked out okay so what happens during the process of melting melting essentially is solid changes state to liquid l i q u i d liquid state all right so uh, for melting you are definitely heating the solid right so you gain energy but what it does is to overcome the very strong attractive forces now take in, bear in mind the particles here in the solid state are attracted very strongly and we need to overcome this attraction then we can get a liquid state okay so holding the particles in fixed position this is the solid okay and are able to move freely randomly and sliding past one another so the sliding portion here you should know is already describing a liquid state so let's move on next but what happens to the temperature I think as you know let's use water as an example ice when ice melts ice only melts at one single temperature zero degrees celsius and the temperature does not change so it remains the word we're looking for starts with c constant okay so where does the heat energy go to you are heating the piece of ice it is melting where does the heat go to it is actually absorbed this is the key we are looking for used to overcome the very strong attractive forces holding the particles in a solid 
Okay, so we're melting, I think you notice, we are focusing on solid. Okay, so overcome, very strong, attractive forces, holding the particles together in a solid. So the one, the words that have thick are the keywords that we're looking for in your tests and exams. All right, pause the video if you need to, otherwise you move on to the next question. All right, now for the next question, let's look at the process of boiling. Okay, the question asks us to look at boiling. You'll find that the way of answering the question is very similar. This time, if we are looking at the change in liquid state to the gaseous state, the particles within the liquid gain enough energy. What it means to say is the liquid is heated and then it becomes a gas. So the liquid particles will gain heat energy and then become a gas. All right, now this time round is to overcome the strong attractive forces. The reason why this is a bit different from solid is because the liquid particles are held together by strong attractive forces. But as you can remember in the previous slide, the particles within a solid are held together by very strong attractive forces. That is the difference, okay? Now, the liquid particles will move randomly, slide past one another, but now they are able to move freely and randomly at high speeds. Now, the move freely and randomly at high speeds, this part that I bracket is referring to gas particles. So you can see that there's a difference. The explanation start from liquid and move on to gas. Now next, what happens to the temperature? The temperature remains constant. For example, when you boil water, right? Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and the temperature remains at 100 degrees Celsius during boiling. So where does the heat energy go to? It is used to, the keyword here is absorb, used to overcome the strong. Now bear in mind, it's strong. On the previous slide, the keyword is very strong, but here it is strong is because we are looking at particles in liquid. So the description, the keyword that we want is slightly different. Okay, the correct keywords has to be used in your answer to secure your full marks. All right, please be very careful. Now let's move on. You will see the same explanation in the subsequent pages, but you need to make some changes. Please change the page number to page 10 and change the section number to 7.3.1. Okay, that's all for today's lesson. Um, thank you very much for your attention and tuning in. See you next time.